there is an issue about how do we create kind of political discussions where people think that we need to start to cooperate. We need to start to listen to other people. We need to start to think about how do we come together to have mutually under, understanding each other and have cooperative solutions rather than just you're bad, I'm good, you're bad, I'm good. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, again, like you, like I, I am a clinician or, and a methods person and think immediately, huh, what would make it, what would make it better? So I think about psychological strengths. I also think about conditions in groups that would make broadly politics better governance better. Uh, what's gone so wrong in the last 10,000 years is the accumulation of wealth and power that has served the few and harmed the many. How did that actually happen? And as you know, I've written a, a very accessible brief paper on it. Um, it's actually available now at my website, um, you know, Healthy Human Politics. During and, healthy politics, yeah. Yeah. And if you think about um, hunter-gatherer bands or any group of people, 40, 50, 60 people living together most of their lives, that's our template for effective decision-making, politics, and sharing resources and making decisions. That's what politics is about, fundamentally. Um, the three conditions were present in those hunter-gatherer settings that are no longer present today. Those three conditions were common truth, common welfare, and common justice. In a nutshell, when you're living together year after year after year, it's clear what's really going on. Second, your welfare is bound together. If someone falls down, that drags the group down. If someone is benefited, that pulls the group up. Uh, third, there's common justice. Yes, there are hierarchies, certainly in hunter-gatherer bands, as best we can tell from those that are still present in the world today or that, or that have been studied over the last couple hundred years, but they're fairly flat. And if a leader, a hunter, a shaman, a chief, whatnot, is a real serious asshole over time, things happen. You know, people leave, they whoop on them, they nominate somebody else. They're, you have got to live with it. You have to face the people you've hurt every day. Uh, and you're bound to them through ties of kinship. Okay, common truth, welfare, and justice. Those are the objective conditions that constrained um, some of our more brutal tendencies, which then had free reign against them, those other bands that humans competed with, often very aggressively, cruelly, and violently. But within their band, their politics, their decision-making, their sharing of resources was constrained and um, supported by these three conditions, which were then lost when surpluses began to develop, as you well know, right. with uh, farming and herding, uh, the agriculture broadly, uh, which then enabled larger con you know, concentrations of human dwellings and then growing elites, which then perpetuated um, you know, their wealth and power over time. So the question becomes then in the 20th, 21st century, how do we change that? How do we reestablish the conditions of common truth, welfare, and justice? Certainly in the kind of sort of democracies, and that's a fuzzy word, you know, air quotes around it, including in my own country, in which there's some very serious attacks on democracy uh, from essentially white nationalist, um, you know, quarters uh, who just are really happy about authoritarianism. Uh, you know, what can we actually do? And for me, um, I think of, um, I have a great prescription, I have a great diagnosis, and an incomplete prescription. The diagnosis is we need to reestablish, even at a moral level, as a bedrock principle for politics at any level, whether in a board, a community, a state, a country, a world, common truth, welfare, and justice. That's a very clear diagnosis of our issue, and I think it's right. And your, your diagnosis is very, very similar. The movement from caring and sharing to, what do you call it? Controlling and holding, right, mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a basis for politics. Uh, the thing that strikes me most is the necessity for the many to organize and stand up to the few. Not violently, but through the sheer force of numbers, we must band together to make a difference. Otherwise, it will be same old, same old for the next thousand or 10,000 years. And so how do we band together? And one of the ways that we could do that is for good-hearted organizations of various kinds to really, really band together. 
nonprofits at different scales, whether it's a small nonprofit like my nonprofit or your nonprofit, NGOs, or larger ones. What's striking is that highly capitalistic business organizations, companies, compare, compete fiercely at the marketplace level, but cooperate intensely and effectively at the political level in all kinds of ways, both uh, legal and corrupt. And yet, nonprofit organizations are typically very friendly with each other, you know, just interacting at kind of the street level, but almost never pool resources in any significant and sustained way for collective action sustained over years at the political policy level. And I think that's a real opportunity for us, a real opportunity for thousands, maybe millions of nonprofit organizations around the world to commit to some fundamental principle, like the climate crisis is a very compelling issue. Uh, there could be other ones related to the fair treatment and education of girls and women that would, by their very nature, those very emotionally compelling issues would lead to the reestablishment increasingly of common truth, welfare, and justice as a result of that kind of large-scale pooling of resources and commitment to change over the course of a single generation. And I would love to see that happen. I would love to see that happen. And I think it's shameful, frankly, that good-hearted organizations are you know, they're involved with their own personal piece of the puzzle. But the ground conditions, the ground conditions of human society in terms of uh, concentrations of wealth and power um, have not really changed very much at all, uh, certainly over the last several hundred years, definitely not over the last several decades.